Welcome to High Five Fitness. I'm Dennett, the host and producer. We are here for an episode on bodybuilding, the art of posing. With me in the studio is my personal coach on posing, Nick. Nick, how are you doing? Great. How's it going, Dennis? Man, I've been having so much fun learning the poses and Good. getting the tips from you. Good. Awesome. And I'm looking forward to this contest I've got coming up in a few days. Definitely. So let's uh, introduce the who we, else we have on stage, and then I want to chat with you a little bit about bodybuilding. Sounds great. Perfect. All right. We've got Brittiana Andrade with us. Um, she does bikini uh, posing. We have JoJo over here, and we have Debbie to my right. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to chatting with all of them. But first, why bodybuilding? I mean, it's a weird sport, if you ask me, because you train one way, but then you compete something that's completely different. I can't think of any other sport like that. Can you? No, um, that is correct. It's, it's a sport where all of the action takes place uh, behind the scenes. Uh, it's not a competitive sport where when you get on stage, you actually perform a feat against somebody else. So it comes down to the work you put in beforehand and then you display the work that you have done on stage uh, when you go up there. So uh, it is definitely um, more of an underground kind of uh, almost a cult following. A lot of people, uh, they get into it and they get addicted to it. They fall in love with it. It's a great sport. Um, if you want to consider it a sport, I personally consider it one. Is it a, a sport? I was going to interrupt you and ask you, or performing art. I would call it a little bit of both. I would definitely call it a sport because there's so much that goes in, into it. There's more involved, I would say, in this sport than most other sports because instead of just performing on game day, you have to be able to control things like your diet, your own actions day in and day out to make sure that you achieve a certain result. And other sports, they don't necessarily entail that much dedication um, overall. So it's a mix of having both mental discipline, but also having science behind what you're doing. Correct, yes. Now, what are some benefits that people that don't want to compete can get? Well, the biggest thing is just more knowledge on your own education in nutrition, uh, the science of working out itself. So once you start diving into all these thir certain aspects that, that bodybuilders need to have control over, you start learning so much and you become a more well-rounded athlete, and you can translate that into any other sport if you want to. It's so beneficial to anybody who's looking to just get into better shape um, or even just more specifics in terms of get better in certain sports. Well, that's one of the things I always really like about bodybuilding versus some of the other styles of fitness is you're really focusing on balancing your body out, bringing up your weak points. If your legs are undersized, well, you want to work your legs more to bring them up. If your arms are undersized, your biceps or triceps, you know what to hit to focus on them. Right. Whereas some of the other CrossFit sports, you're out there hitting it hard, having fun, but you're not really balancing out your body the same way you a bodybuilder would be. Very true, yes. Well, let's uh, chat with some of our folks up here. I've got some people that I really enjoy working out with. So we've got uh, JoJo here. Where do you work out, JoJo? Um, I work out at a facility called uh, FNS Training Center in Santa Clara. Now, for our viewers who aren't familiar with that, what's FNS stand for? Uh, it stands for Fitness Never Sleeps. And what are the workouts like there? Um, it's a mix of a lot of different things. Um, there's a lot of um, strength training and weightlifting um, and cardio incorporated as well and plyometrics. It's a very diverse kind of workout um, and no workouts are the same and um, usually um, it's done in like a group atmosphere. Team so, like, support where you motivate training. and push right. each other to go to the next level. Exactly. So what, what got you into fitness and what motivates you to go, what, what motivates you to go there to FNS? Um, what motivates me to go to FNS, um, I like to stay healthy um, and stay fit um, and at the same time um, I work a full-time desk job so it's a good stress reliever and um, to kind of get my mind off of work and kind of be more uh, well-rounded as well. More balanced. Mm -hmm. Now you were kind of thinking of maybe hitting a show coming up at some point in the future? Yes I am. So Nick, what tips would you have for someone like Jojo? What should she be should she be working on her diet or her what lifts? I mean, what are the general tips? Well, when we look at somebody, an athlete who wants to go on stage and do a competitive uh, bodybuilding figure bikini competition, we gotta first figure out what category that person is gonna fit into, what they're comfortable doing, and then of course adjust their workouts and of course their diet uh, and make it very precise and make sure that we are aware of everything that's going on with that athlete's body 
That way we can make changes uh, when the time comes to it and we can get them ready to be on stage uh, with enough planning and preparation to where the athlete feels confident and secure on stage uh, and there's no last minute a hustle to try to get them ready. Well, JoJo hits her, I know her well, she hits her workouts really hard, she pushes. So, I mean, someone like JoJo that's really into working out, what do they have to do to go from there to contest ready? Are we looking at months, years, weeks? Depending on the level of body, body fat, it could be only a couple months to get them physically ready. More important than that though is again, getting them confident and that's gonna come down to posing. That's where someone like myself comes into the picture. You gotta make the athlete feel like they're able to display their body to the best of their ability and do it so, so much so that it's a second nature to them. They walk on stage and the movements that they perform, they just seem fluid. And that's most, most of the times I notice the hardest part for people. Um, it takes multiple competitions for them to feel ready um, and to actually feel comfortable on stage. All right. Now, um, Debbie, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thanks for having us. Well, thank here. you for joining us. I wanted to ask you, you have a blog. Could you tell us a little bit what's your blog? What, what do you do on your blog? What's the mission of it? Um, about six years ago, when our family relocated to the Bay Area, my, at the urging of my family, um, they suggested I take a break in the day because I was very focused. I was a full-time mom, so very focused on my children. And I actually did not want to take a break. Um, I was fully immersed in what they were doing, their school and activities. Um, so grudgingly, I um, made an appointment um, at a fitness facility that was midway between my children's schools. And when I walked in, what I later realized was that I walked in as an individual, Debbie, and not as a mother or wife to somebody. And so during the course of six months being there, I realized it was sort of like regaining an, an my identity as an you individual. Found yourself yeah, it was very, too. it was, yeah, I kind of found a passion for fitness. I found something that I was actually, people looked up to me um, for. They, they look so. up, a lot of people look up to you. I've heard people talking. And you inspire a lot of people out there, so I think that's awesome that you're doing that. Yeah, so that's so where I'm at today is I'm here to inspire other mothers and, and other women. So just, and you do kickboxing in addition to going to FNS, right? Yes, I used to do kickboxing. I don't do that as much now. I'm primarily at Fitness and Never Sleeps where JoJo also works out. All right, and how many times a week are you working out about? Um, I work out probably four to five times a week. And how do you feel after you just finish your workouts? A sense of accomplishment. I mean, I, it's part of my, it, when I say that, I mean, it's actually more, it's just a lifestyle for me. It's, it's, if I don't work out, it, it just doesn't feel right. So it's an automatic, it's just part of my day now. Awesome. Well, I want to move on and actually learn what what are poses about, Nick? So if you could kind of lead this next session and show what does a woman bikini contestant need to be looking at. Perfect. All right, Sounds I look forward great. to watching this. Awesome. So we're going ahead and, and we're gonna have an athlete, Brittiana, uh, perform a basic walk for us today. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it. We're gonna go through one walk first. And after we go through it once, I'm gonna go ahead and break down each pose just to show what it's highlighting. Let's go ahead and have you, Britt, we'll have you walk to the front and go ahead and perform your just regular, your Model T walk. So start from the middle, then go to the right side and the left side for us and then back to the middle. All right? All right, so as she's moving, I'm gonna go ahead and talk. All right, she is performing her basic poses. We have her front, her transitions to the back here. Obviously, this is her back pose. Now she's gonna go ahead and move to the side in just a moment. Now, the way she moves is most noticeable. Um, take a look at the confidence that she has and the movement she's making. This is important for an athlete who's gonna go on stage. You're in front of cameras, you're in front of a lot of people. So you have to make sure that you're gonna go ahead and be able to display your physique in a confident manner. Now go ahead and hold that for me, Brittiana. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this pose right here. Take a look at the way her stance is. This is important for the model to have a nice wide stance. Her hip is popped to one side and she's got her hand comfortably draped on that hip right there. Her shoulder looks great and her arm looks great. And of course she is displaying her abs really well in a natural way. 
that it's very important to have a natural look about you. You don't want to look like you're forcing this. So she has a great smile, she looks beautiful, the body looks great. That's what the judges are looking for. So go ahead and transition from this to your back pose, Britt, and let's go ahead and talk about that for a moment. Notice again how she moves, the transitions are all planned out. Although they do look fluid and they look natural, it is something that the athlete is working on. Um, so take a look at this pose here. Now we're taking a look at the back. All right, we have the legs displayed, the calves, the hamstrings, of course, the glutes. We have the lower back and a nice arch, and then we do have the back muscles displayed up top along with the arms. So this is the second pose they go into after their front pose. They are being judged on every single move they make though. So be aware of that if you are planning on going on stage. Go ahead and go from here, Britt, to the right side of the stage for us, and let's go ahead and talk about that, all right? So depending on what competition you do, what organization you compete in, they're gonna have you do certain types of walks, maybe different types of walks. For instance, uh, she might not be asked to do a typical Model T walk in one organization, but in a different show, they might ask the competitor to do that. All right, so just be aware of that as well. Here we have your classic, typical side pose. Again, notice the stance. All right, we have the hip pop. This is a reoccurring theme that you're gonna notice in a lot of bikini competitors. And you have the hand comfortably draped on the side. Again, everything looks comfortable and fluid and natural, but the athlete trains herself to do this so that it just comes, uh, comes out naturally. It's second nature to her. Go ahead and move from here to the left side of the stage, Britt, and let's go ahead and show them that pose one more time. Here we have, of course, a mirror image of what we saw over here. Everything looks great. The hips are popped. The hand is placed comfortably, and she's smiling. That is a sign of an athlete being comfortable. All right, so if the judges see that somebody is struggling, they're going to definitely uh, knock them down points on that if they don't look like they know what they're doing. So you might be able to train yourself to be physically fit on stage, but if you can't present it in a, in a reasonable manner, then it's going to be difficult for you to go ahead and win that competition. Let's have you walk to the front, and we'll go ahead and just break that down one more time. The athlete, depending on, again, what competition they do, they'll walk back to the front, They'll perform their pose, front, back, front pose, back pose, and then she'll walk off. So what I want you to do, Britt, is I want you to go ahead and do your transition, face the rear, and give me your back pose one more time, and then walk to the back of the stage and give me your model to wave off, all right? So once the competitors are done with their walk, all right, you'll see what she'll perform in a minute, is uh, she'll walk to the back of the stage and she'll just give her recognition to the judges, all right? So that's just her acknowledgement to the audience and to the judges as well, all right? Thank you so much for helping us out today, Britt. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a male bodybuilder. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Dennett in a typical, classic male posing trunk suit. All right, and let's go ahead and run through the poses now. In male bodybuilding, we have seven mandatory poses that we gotta watch out for, okay? And again, the reoccurring trend is you are being judged on the appearance of everything, not just the muscle group that I'm calling out. So although the pose is going to be called, for instance, a uh, front double bicep pose, they're not just looking at the biceps. They're going to be looking at everything. So we're going to have him do his basic quarter turn. So they, they're going to analyze the athlete from every single quarter turn. Take a look at how his body looks. Now this is a front relax, a typical front relax then it looks comf comfortable, confident, and he is smiling. Obviously, although the pose is called a relaxed pose, it, it's not very relaxed. The athlete is tensing everything. He needs to be focused on what needs to be tensed. He cannot have too much focus on the abdomen in terms of contracting down, so he has to be able to lift himself up to a certain height. All right, let's go ahead and have you quarter turn to the right, Dennett, and take a look at that. Here we have the athlete moving to the right to display the side of his body. Now again, certain organizations are gonna have different rules, different guidelines. So for this pose, they might not allow an athlete to bring his arm across, but naturally that's what the athlete wants to do to bring out this area here, all right? So he wants to display his chest, his right arm, and his shoulder. So he is going ahead, he's twisting a little bit at the waist, and that's completely natural, all right? The abdomens are contracted, they're tense and they're flexed. All right, we're gonna go ahead and have him quarter turn to the right now, so face the rear. Beautiful, now this is just the opposite of what we had facing the front. We have the lats, all right, nice taper down to the back. We have his hamstrings being displayed, his calves, and his arms are angled quite nicely. Again, this is very meticulous work. He's been working very hard and it's posing because he has a show coming up, so this is not just natural 
um, movement that he just fell right into. This is something that the athlete has worked on for a very long time. Go ahead and quarter turn to the right one more time. We'll give him the uh, right side of the body. All right, this is a mirror image of what we had over here. All right, again, we're displaying just about everything because that's what the judges are looking at. They're looking at the entire body. They don't want to just see, all right, he's got nice legs. All right, he's got nice abs. They want to see he's got a well-balanced proportion symmetrical physique. And that's why they go ahead and they grade you on every side. So face the front, didn't give him one more quarter turn to the right. Now we're going to get into the seven mandatory poses. All right, these are uh, the bread and butter of what bodybuilders are being judged on. So there's a lot that goes into these poses. I'm gonna call him out and I'm gonna tell you what he's displaying. I'm gonna tell you how he's doing it. All right, go ahead and hit a front double bicep and go ahead and hit it with a vacuum pose. All right, take a look at the way he's displaying his abdomen here. All right, this is very rare. The ability to control your abdomen and suck it in in that way, okay, it's referred to as a vacuum. Obviously, he can't breathe while he's doing that, so after he has to breathe and he can't hold it anymore, he go ahead and just keeps tension on his abs, all right, but he's not sucking it in too much. All right, take a look. We have the legs being displayed here. The quadriceps are being looked at, so he has a nice bend in his knees to put tension on them. He does have his arms out in a very specific angle. Notice the angle of his arms right here. This was planned, all right? We don't want to go at too acute of an angle, and we don't want to go at too obtuse of an angle. So this is all planned work by the athlete, and this is why it's so important for an athlete to work with a coach, all right, because you get that feedback. All right, go ahead and hit from here. Let's go ahead and hit your front lat spread, Dennett. Great, so this pose is displaying the latissimus dorsi, all right, those are the things that look like wings. All right, also we have his shoulders and we have his chest displayed quite nicely. His legs are in the same position as they were before. You will see variations in leg position depending on uh, the competitor itself and their comfort level. So some might flare out the leg, step out to one side, but what we have then to do is just stand in the same position because it's comfortable and he's able to focus on the upper body here. Notice the look in his face. He's composed, he is smiling, he looks like he's enjoying himself. That is important, all right? Let's go ahead and give them the side chest pose, Dennett. Now we're gonna be displaying the side chest and the most competitions, you get to choose which side you do. Okay, so for Dennett, we decide to do his left side chest. That's what he's most comfortable doing. Sometimes they might grade you on both. So we do have to be aware of that, all right? We do have tension on the abs that is a key of this pose, because again, although it is a side chest pose and they are obviously marking him on his chest, they are also taking a look at how everything else looks. The abs look fantastic on Dennett. He's at a low enough body fat level to where when he tenses up the, the abs, they look great. Also, I just want to bring uh, attention to this right here. This is the serratus anterior. And that, if you are lean enough, looks fantastic. That is be being displayed here quite nicely. We'll go from there into his side tricep pose. This is personally my favorite pose of Dennett, right, because he has great arm definition, great shoulder definition. All right, now we're gonna bring some attention to his legs. All right, his legs are in the same position they were in the side chest. All right, they are planned to be that way. He's got a little bit of the, uh, the calf vein displayed. He's got the hamstrings and the glutes displayed as well. Now again, it's called the side tricep pose, but you gotta keep in, in consideration they're judging you on how you look everywhere. So not just the triceps. His abs look fantastic. I tell him that every time I see him. So I gotta make sure that he tenses them and he displays them enough to the crowd because you will get marked on points if you look better, obviously, but if you're not displaying one of your strongest points, you might not make it to the top five in terms of a competitive bodybuilding lineup. All right, let's go from this pose to the rear. We'll go for the back double bicep. This pose is, again, the opposite of what we did face in the front, but we have to display our legs quite differently. So they tell you to do a, a, a spike of the calf. All right, so notice how his right leg uh, he's up on the toe, he's displaying his calf, he's displaying his hamstring, and now we're going up to the, to the upper body here. We have his back nice and straight. One mistake a lot of competitors make is they'll lean too far back. All right, that's an issue that we gotta be aware of. The angles of his arms are perfect. They are well placed, and he's got everything under control. Now this is a good opportunity for the athlete to breathe when they're facing the rear, because their abdomen is not uh, as noticeable, unless the judges are way off to one side. So luckily for him, he doesn't have to keep too much attention here because this is a lot more work than people would assume. There's so much more work that goes into this. Usually by the time he's gonna be done and he's off stage, he's gonna be sweating, he's gonna be exhausted. All right, let's go ahead and go to the rear lat spread, Dennett. Mm -hmm. 
great pose. Another strong pose for dinner because it's latissimus dorsi and sits at a very high angle in his back. All right, that is just genetic. You can't pick and choose where your muscles insert. So take a look at how he's able to create this illusion here of having a slim waist and a really wide back. That has to do with the actual insertion of the muscle itself, that is genetics. All right, his legs are displayed in the same exact way as they were before. Arms are great, nice angle. He's again able to relax his, uh, his core a little bit and his abs, and everything is looking great. We'll go ahead and have him face the front. We're going to go ahead and give him the ab and thigh pose. Obviously, ab and thigh pose, we're going to be focusing on the abdominals, which are great on Dennett, and of course the thighs, so the quadriceps. Notice how he straightens out his right leg, uh, the leg of the thigh that he wants to highlight. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this right here. Now you got the quadricep, you got four different muscles there. I don't wanna bore everybody, but take a look at here at these two down here. We have the la lateralis right here, the vastus lateralis, and we have uh, the medialis right there. And those get nice and striated. Feathery is what you'll hear a lot of competitors refer them to. Uh, it looks fantastic. Now again, as he's breathing out, he's exhaling all the air he can, and he's got a nice display of the abdominals and the serratus anterior again. I like bringing out the attention to that because that is not easy to get. All right, from here, we'll go into the final pose, which is called the most muscular pose. Now watch the athlete as he go ahead and he, he displays his physique in a position where he feels he looks the most muscular. There are variations of the most muscular. Notice how he just flipped into the second pose here. All right, so you have a little bit of freedom in terms of what poses you wanna do for your most muscular. If you feel like this looks best, you can do this. If you feel like a pose that's more hunched over looks best, you can do that as well. So I also do wanna highlight one pose that he can do very well uh, at the pose that Frank Zane used to do. So go ahead and give him the one with the arms overhead in it. And we'll go ahead and display the vacuum one last time for the crowd. Beautiful. So this is an old pose done by a gentleman named Frank Zane. Very famous pose. Then it can hit it just fine. So that was perfect, didn't it? How you feeling? Great. So I want to thank you for taking, a, taking your time to come up here and display your physique. Um, you did a great job. Honestly, you did great. So again, guys, bodybuilding is honestly for anybody. All right, women, men, there's multiple organizations, there's multiple different things that we can do in terms of what you want to uh, achieve. You can do a figure, you can do physique, you can display yourself in categories that make you pose more so than others, or if you don't feel very comfortable, you can do a category that doesn't make you display your body um, as much as somebody like Dennett just did. So, honestly, the biggest part in the posing aspect of bodybuilding is finding somebody you can work with that's going to help you achieve the illusion that you need to achieve. And that's one of the most difficult parts. You can get lean uh, relatively easily, but you have to be able to achieve a certain desired look. And that's what takes a lot of practice. All right, Dan, why don't you come on back up here? <clears throat> All right, well, thank you for the pointers. That's actually a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Let's it's a lot bring more. Uh, Britt back up and uh, ask her a couple questions before we're totally out of time. Awesome. And uh, again, thank you for the pointers. That does get you out of breath. It does. It's a lot more. So, work. what should I be eating and drinking on show day? Eating and drinking on show day, well, that's, that's a completely different story. That's that's <laughs> that's subjective to the athlete, and so we have to be obviously very meticulous with what we allow the athlete to eat or drink. And usually, they work with the coach, and that coach is going to outline them that them for them. I do plan to eat a bunch of purple yams the night before my competition. Purple yams. Our next high five show, I will be showing a little cooking tips, and we nice. will be cooking some purple yams, one of my favorites. Sounds exciting. But um, we didn't have a chance to really get in. Well, come on up. So, how long have you competed for? Um, I just started last year. Um, I recently turned 18 uh, last August. So. So far, I've done two shows, planning to do one in October. All right, how do you find time to train, diet, and go to school? It definitely gets hard, especially when you start doing double days um, of cardio. So in the morning, at night, and then work out in the middle. Um, but you just gotta wake up at 4 a.m. sometimes. How long are your cardio sessions when you're out there or getting ready for the comps? Um, between, I'd say, half hour to 45 minutes depending on how close I am to the competition. Half hour to 45 minutes? Well, when and that's once or twice a day? You're doing half an hour twice a day? Twice a day, yeah. 45 minutes and then half hour later. 
And let's talk about diet. So when you're up there training, you're going to school. So are you packing six meals a day? Are you getting up at four to have your first meal and then hit, hitting your cardio or cardio, I guess, then your first meal and you're bringing a big lunch with? Oh yeah, I have about five different meals in my backpack every day that I bring to wake up early because I'm too lazy to make it all the night before, so I have to make my five meals. So it definitely does take a lot of time, but it's worth it for sure. It does. How do you feel after competition? Do you go and have a huge meal? Oh yeah, um, my last two meals, cheat meals the day after was um, pizza with tons of cheese and sauce, my favorite. So how much weight did you gain the day after your competition? I wouldn't say I gained a lot of weight, just more fullness. Um, I'd say probably a pound though, uh, definitely. Well, that's really awesome that you're starting at the young age and that you have the confidence to get out there. I think it will really help you in other aspects of life. Have you found that it already you're building more confidence in other areas? For sure. Um, in all aspects of life, I just apply the principles of working out and pushing yourself more and more um, and see how much you can take in all aspects of my life. What got you started in the first place? Um, I did gymnastics when I was four and then um, started with a personal trainer at age 13 and my whole family was into fitness so it just came naturally. So you started at the age of four doing gymnastics. That's really awesome. I'm gonna ask our other uh, guest to come back up on stage here. I think if I was a kid again I'd kind of want to do gymnastics. I've also often been asked if I'm a did gymnastics when I was younger and I have so much respect for people who do it. It's I think a really good way to start your foundations. In fact I think Debbie also did gymnastics when you were younger, is that correct? Yes I did. And Jojo did as well. You did? Yeah. I did not know that Jojo. <laughs> well, we learn something new every time. Yeah. So we have all of the women on our show tonight have formerly done gymnastics. That's something our viewers may want to keep in mind. <coughs> Nick, did you do gymnastics? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did, but I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of yoga. I uh, I first met you through yoga, That's actually, correct, yes. and it really does help with the control of the body and the posing. We're just about out of time. I want to encourage our viewers to check out High Fitness. We have a page on Facebook, and also we have videos out there on YouTube and Blip. Thanks for coming out, everyone. Enjoyed the session. Let's give a big high five. Keep the motivation up. Keep the workouts up. Next time, cook it. Yeah. Thanks.